We all know that good research starts with a question, but how do we know what is a good question to ask? In this demo, I will show how you can point ChatGPT to any content on the web and generate that interesting question that can help you think further about any topic. The secret sauce that we'll be using is Infranodos Visual Text Network Analysis tool that represents any text as a network, identifies the main clusters of topics inside, and then extracts those topics which have the gaps between them. And then it uses this gap, like it's shown here in our Infernodus Chrome extension, to come up with an interesting research question that would bridge those topics together. So once again, it extracts the topics which exist in the text, looks for the ones that are maybe at the periphery and that could benefit from being better connected, and then it tries to come up with an interesting research question using GPT-4, which powers ChatGPT, to generate some content that would link them together. And that's interesting because uh, this question that we see here, for instance, it's not necessarily what already exists in the article. It's rather how you can approach this article in order to develop the content that is inside further in an interesting way. So if you want to learn how it works, keep watching and I will demonstrate it step by step. First of all, you will need to install Infernodus Chrome extension into your Chrome browser and you need to have an account on Infernodus to use it. Then you open an article that you like and then you can activate Chrome extension by either clicking the button in the toolbar or this button here at the bottom. And what happens now is that uh, Infernodus will extract the content of this web page and generate the main topics uh, that exist inside. So it will try to understand what this text is about. Then it will find the two topics uh, that could be better connected and generate an interesting research question that would bridge those topics together. So here, the article is on the health implications of organic food and organic agriculture. And the question that it generates is related to the relationship between pesticides uh, and uh, their consumption of organic food. So how does the consumption of food and the diet influences uh, uh, human health, basically? And we can think of the answer to this question. So one advantage here is that we already have a very interesting approach to the content of this article. Rather than getting a summary of what it's about, we're jumping directly to the main part of what it's trying to deal with, to sort of this question that, that it, it attempts to explore. But we can also, of course, click the ID8 button and then this same question will be sent back to GPT-4. Uh, this is why it's taking a little bit of time. You can also make it work faster if you use uh, GPT 3.5. And then uh, the AI will actually try to generate an answer for you, but based on the content of the article, based on, uh, on the topics uh, between which it identified the gap. So in this case, it says that organic food production restricts use of synthetic pesticides, leading to lower pesticide exposure for consumers. And then it talks more about the specific types of pesticides. And uh, here it says that consumption patterns such as shift to organic foods can substantially reduce human consumer exposure and have, have potential health benefits, right? So then it's, it says that further research is essential for detailed insights and the exact variation and implications of, on human health. But this is interesting. Like we can directly see here that if we want to take this research further, what we could focus on is the link between health benefits and maybe even the effect on public health and medical expenses, let's say, of organic diet. Because it shows us here what is the exact link and kind of like what can motivate further research in this direction. So this becomes a really good way to get a very actionable overview of this article instead of just getting a summary, right? We can also take this same question and send it to the content Q&A box, which is also available here. And when you click the button, it does a slightly different thing. Instead of uh, posing this question in relation to the topics that it discovered in relation to the gap, it will take all the content of the article and try to come up with an answer which would respond to the question, uh, but taking into account the context of the whole article, actually. And uh, this usually is a really good way to see if there is already an answer inside this text to the question that we generated. So in the first case scenario, we generate an answer 
uh, but that can kind of uh, slightly go outside of the scope of the article. Here we're trying to see if there is already some answers to this question inside the article itself. And of course you can, by the way, ask any question to this article. So for example, uh, is it better to eat organic food? Let's say. Very simple answer. Usually you would come up with something a bit more interesting, but you can actually chat with your content using this box and uh, generate some interesting responses. As I said, it will take a little bit slower if you use a uh, GPT-4. So if you need uh, a fast-paced uh, written, then use GPT-3.5. I think it's default in the extension. So here it answers uh, and it tells us about all the advantages and also disadvantages of eating organic food based on the content of this article. Now, if you would like to also see what are the main topics inside, so that's a more traditional use of AI, you can actually click here, main topics, and then you see the main topics uh, which this article is talking about, organic agriculture, health effects, pesticide exposure, nutrient intake. If you click here, you can see more topics, risk assessment, European Union, and so on. And then if you click on summary, what happens is that Infranodos will take those topics which it identified extract the most relevant statements from this article and then generate a summary for you which uh, gives you uh, an understanding of what this article is about. So as you can see you can of course start with the summary but I usually prefer to start with uh, generating a question because it gives me a much more precise entry point into the content and uh, once I interact with uh, an article in this way then I can of course uh, get a general overview and start understanding what else this article is actually talking about. By the way, we also have this button here, show another gap, and here it regenerates a gap. So if the first one was about organic agriculture and uh, pesticides, the second one is about organic agriculture and health effects. And here you see it mentions also antibiotics used in production processes. And uh, if we send this question to uh, back to AI, what's going to happen is that it will try to come up with a response uh, that will relate to this question. So here it's talking about uh, how organic food consumption can potentially reduce the risk of allergic diseases, a best in exposure to pesticides residues, uh, also how animal products uh, contain higher omega-3 fatty acids and uh, how also there are some concerns about antibiotic use in conventional animal farming which may contribute to antibiotic resistance. So it kind of tells us about all the different dangers of uh, eating conventional food uh, by extracting the information from this article. So as you can see we can regenerate those gaps over and over again and then come up with uh, more interesting ideas and research questions. Now Another really interesting feature is that if you can go to main topics and let's say I want to, to, to see uh, less represented stuff like for, for instance antibiotic resistance. I can click on this topic and then I will see all the statements which relate to this topic and if one statement is bold it means it's the most important statement in this topic. So I can click on that and see exactly the part of the text which is talking about the subject. So here I see I jumped directly to the part of the text which is talking about development of antibiotic resistance in bacteria. I can also jump, so for example here, and it highlights to me the part of the text which is talking about uh, this subject here, antibiotics and livestock and so on. Right, so you can also use this extension not only to understand uh, what the text is about or to generate research questions, but to also jump to the part of the content which you find interesting. So this is how it would work. By the way, if you want to add your own content, you can also click here and then it will enable you to just copy and paste whatever text you're interested in and explore it further. And if you want to edit the content which is analyzed, you can click here and for example, delete some of the stuff that are maybe not so relevant and then process modified content. And of course, you can always jump to uh, Infranodus you need to log in in this case and then uh, generate some more interesting research questions uh, in relation to the subject using some other input sources. So this is how you would approach it 
with a research article. I just want to give uh, another quick demo if you're interested. So I will use the Financial Times article for that um, and just show you how it can also be used to analyze news. I find it's pretty interesting because uh, this approach, it doesn't have to be only useful for uh, scientific research. It can also be really interesting when you are just reading an article and want to get some insights from it. So in instead of reading the whole thing, I can just click on the button here. It will show me what are the main topics inside, which are also available here. So I see that this article is about monetary policy, economic growth, inflation target, job growth. Okay, I understand. And then it identifies the gap, monetary policy, labor market, and generates an interesting question that helps me prime myself in relation to this article. So how I can develop the discourse further. How have increases in labor costs and speciality markets affected the potential for central banks such as the Bank of England to declare victory over inflation? Great question. It shows how there is this intricate link between uh, labor costs and inflation and you cannot just say that uh, inflation is over once the crisis is over because actually the salaries increased and so it has an effect on inflation and makes it harder to stop it and therefore reduce the interest rate. So as you can see, it makes me actively engage with the content. I don't just read an overview or I don't just kind of skim through it and see what it's about. I approach it with a question in mind and then I can try to answer this question or use the AI to answer it for me and with me so that together in this human in the loop approach we can generate some interesting ideas in relation to this question. So for example, here it actually uses the content of the article to provide me with a response uh, that would relate it. There is a, an interesting functionality also here that I want to mention is that you don't have to always use the content of the article itself. If you click this button here, transcend this context, what will happen is that when it generates an answer to this article, it's it's not only going to use the content of the article, it's also going to use uh, its general knowledge of uh, like what exists out there on this topic in general. And then it will produce an answer which will respond to this question in a way that uh, takes you outside of this context. So this is how you could also use it as well. And finally, if you want, you can also go to the content Q&A and uh, ask a direct question like what should be my investment investment strategy someone is banging on the wall i hope it doesn't disturb you and uh, what happens here is that infranotus will extract the parts of the text uh, which are related to this question and then it says okay considering the latest trends in asia and europe persistent domestic inflation uh, possible decline inflation and inflation, a cautious approach might be beneficial. Uh, listen to the interest rates and prepare for unexpected inflationary pressure. So basically it says inflation is probably here to stay and you should probably be watching it very closely to see what effects it has. We can also regenerate uh, this answer and see if there is uh, anything other interested. And here it says that uh, given the expected decline in inflation, it might be wise to focus on assets typically favored during low inflation periods. So as soon as inflation declines, be ready to invest into bonds uh, and various other safe uh, assets. So it's great. It's just using the content of the article to come up with uh, some interesting answers in relation to this subject. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Please, if you're interested to try this Infranodus Chrome extension, let us know. We will send you a file that you can install into Chrome and try it out. You need to be Infranodus subscriber for that. And also, if you have any questions about how it works in general, please let me know in the comments. I will be happy to answer. You can also contact us via the support portal. But once again, just to explain to you how that works if you watched until the end of this video, it's very simple. You have a, let's say like you have a graph, I'm just going to open one uh, here. And uh, once again, it identifies the main topics, shows you 
which ones are at the periphery and then generates uh, a question that would link them together. By the way, you also have this functionality here in uh, the blind spot. So you can actually highlight those gaps. Just need to switch it. So highlight those gaps in the discourse. Let's say here, reiterate through them. And then once you find the ones that are further from each other, you can click generate inside question and it's going to do the same thing in Infranodus as we did in uh, the Chrome extension. And then if you click on elaborate and use GPT-4 chat, it's going to attempt to answer this question using GPT-4. So this is the same kind of approach, um, but in Infranodus. What I demonstrated to you before was a sort of like an easy version where it does everything for you using this Chrome extension. But if you would like to get into this content a little bit deeper, then you can also use the knowledge graph and the analytical tools inside Infranodus to achieve similar results, but maybe more detailed and uh, where you have more control over what's actually going to happen. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Please subscribe to this video to get informed about the new ones as they come out. And thank you for watching.